Welcome to the Zag Talk Podcast Live. My name is Guy Danhoff, and we've got a very special treat for you as we're going to be talking about the Shape Seattle pregame live stream. I don't know about you, but I am so excited about the, this upcoming week's event. And we got a, a whole uh, slew of guests there and talk about some really cool features and things that are going to be happening. And uh, just for those of you who don't know me, I am the president of Mo Shape in Missouri. And this is my fifth year working on the media side with Shape America. And I'm so excited to be co-hosting this. So right now, I'd like to bring on my co-host, and that is Jessica, Jessica Matheson. She is the 2022 National Health Education Teacher of the Year. Jessica, how are you? Hi, good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Just to let our certainly our audience know that we were supposed to have Michelle Huff with us from New Jersey. Uh, right now, Michelle is actually 30,000 feet uh, above ground as her flight has not landed at this time. So, Jessica, thank you for co-hosting tonight. And Jessica, let's start with a let's start with a, a question because last year, right. let's just say last year's convention was a super big deal because obviously you were the national teacher of the year. And I was wondering if maybe you could give us kind of a snapshot of what your life has been like since <laughs> finding out about that announcement of being teacher of the year and really all the different ways that you've been able to advocate for this profession as a Shape America National Teacher of the Year for Health Education. Um, how much time do we have? Is this is this all the show is about? Um, so you know, just real quick, I think I think a lot of people are aware that I made some big life changes this summer um, because I resigned from my teaching position. Uh, my husband and I were just talking today. I have done eighteen different events in the last calendar year, um, all presenting, working with other people, connecting with different people. Um, you know, it's been fun. Anything from conventions to speak out day to toy time to being a guest teacher in people's classes. And those 18 don't even count. I've been volunteering in my kids' school, helping out their PE classes and doing stuff as well. So it's been, it's been awesome um, just to have this platform to kind of give me that little kick in the booty to, to make some changes in my life that have made me super happy. Absolutely. We're getting a little shout out love from Bob Knipe and I can't wait to see him in a few days and the shape countdown to shape Seattle's in full effect. And Bob, we will be talking about that at the end of this broadcast. So Jessica, all I can say is it just seems like you're everywhere when it comes to social media. And I just think your journey is really, really cool. And I was just wondering from your perspective, you know, what's something that you're really looking forward to at this year's Shape Seattle convention? Uh, you know, it's it's ironic. My whole platform with my teacher of the year is what is the most important thing in the world? It is the people. It is the people. It is the people. Mm -hmm. And I look at the people I've met in the past year and it's crazy. Like I'll be with people and I'll be like, wait, we didn't even know each other a year ago. What? Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing the people uh, at Shape Seattle, at socials, presentations, just in the hallways, I'm going for runs, whatever it may be. Um, the people, I'm totally looking forward to the people. And Jessica, what would you say to those perhaps, because uh, I think there's going to be fifth or quite a few folks, at least five categories. What do you say to those um, hopefuls that could be the teacher of the year for 2023? You know, here's here's the deal. You're part of the toy family. Like you, you are there. So take it all in, um, enjoy it, embrace it. Um, I, I maybe don't have the best advice. Just say yes and go, <laughs> go and do things. When you get invited to go somewhere, don't worry about going back to your hotel room and changing your clothes and dropping off your backpack. Just bring that backpack with you and just um, just go and, and just make the most of it. Um, some people would disagree with that, but um, that's what I do. And, and I have a blast. <laughs> well, Jessica, that's one thing for certain. You definitely had a blast as well as all the other four teachers of the year. And uh, so it's going to be great. Stay tuned because we will be doing some uh some actually some interviews uh with your class of 22 
uh, during the Shape Seattle convention. So that'll be kind of a nice feature. Now, without further ado, let's bring on our Shape America president, Dr. Kim Ballard. Kim, all I can say is, you know, hey. you have been a mentor of mine. You've been a mentor to so many. I know that this day has been a long time coming. I can't, I can remember when you first found out that you're going to be the Shape America president. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that classic look. And, and, Kim, and certainly, you know, I, like I said, I can say this because we've spent so much time, you know, talking, conversing through the years. And what does it mean now? We're just two days away from the national convention. It's your theme, servant leadership. So if you could kind of frame for us what this means to you. Yeah, wow. And I can't believe that it's here for one. Um, it's, it just seems unreal right now. And I'm in Seattle now. I just got in today. Um, it's going to be amazing. I just saw some of the staff. They are hard at work getting everything um, ready and set up. Um, yes, yeah, servant leadership. As it's, it's interesting, guy, because I've been able now to not only live through my life, you know, that way, um, yeah, from my level, but it's been really interesting from the Shape America president's view to see so much other amazing leadership, you know, and it just has filled my heart so much. Um, that's just been, that, I think that's been one of the most satisfying things is to see how much leadership is happening in our field and, and that different point of view. Um, it's incredible. So yeah, I think you'll see a lot of leadership while you're here. I think that you'll hear a lot about leadership while you're here. And, you know, I just inspire people or I hope I inspire people to, to take that leadership role when you get a chance. You know, um, I fell in love with this profession. It took me a little mm -hmm. bit. I went to coach like a lot of people did probably. <laughs> and I had some professors that turned me into teacher instead of coach, not necessarily instead of, but, you know, as coach. And, you know, um, they, they changed my life. And when they did, you know, my love for learning, you know, really took me to a different level. And then, you know, this program of Shape America and uh, NC Shape really became, you know, like a, a, an amazing place for me to go and gain so much knowledge and gain friendships. And I'm just so grateful that I had that opportunity. And I think that's when I really began to feel um, that I, I needed to give something back. Right. And so, you know, I love something. Then when you love, when you love somebody, you're loyal to it. Right. Well, right. I love this profession. Right. I want to be loyal to it and, and try to do as much as I can and, and be grateful for it and, um, and then help to lead it when it comes time. And so I have been able to step up. I've been very fortunate. And, uh, but at the same time, I would say to everybody, I had no idea I would be in this role one day. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> like I dreamed it one day. It wasn't like, you know, and I was scared. You know, it's scary to step out like that. It's, you know, it, 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 it's scary a lot of times. And it's scary to step out to be a leader. But, you know, when we love something and we're loyal to it, leadership is the next best, is the next thing. And we just need to, you know, hopefully be grateful and step out to do that. So I hope people will. A absolutely. You know, one of the things that I'm looking forward to is the continuation of the, Sh of the Shape America Leadership Summit, mm -hmm. where we'll all be in person again. I know yep. that I really valued our time together when we were in Washington, D.C. not too long ago. And now we're getting to continue meeting together as we continue to talk through uh, just some really important topics to make us all better leaders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we can serve our states better, as well as our teachers, the administrators, our schools, you know, um, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that a lot. So talk to us from a big picture standpoint. What are some key things that uh, you want to put on our radar for the upcoming convention? Yeah, well, I'll, I want to say one more thing about leadership, too. The okay. first is that, you know, it's not about power and it's not about always being in the spotlight because you may not see the leadership all the time in, in, a, in a, you know, person being out front on the stage necessarily. There are a lot of leadership things going on that allow other people to shine gotcha. and that's part of being a leader too. So, yeah. um, so I just wanted to say that. And, and it, and it's not about, it's not about power. It's about me giving, it's about us giving, you know, and service. And so anyway, that I just wanted to finish with that thought, but you're going to see that here because the amazing staff at shape America have been doing a lot of hard work. The board's been talking about it for a while. We're excited about the conference <laughs> to come up and I'll tell everybody the first thing you need to do is download the app. 
If you okay. haven't got the app yet, get the Shape America app from your um, app store and download that. Set your own personal schedule. You can get all the handouts, um, all that kind of stuff on there. You can read about things. So that's the first thing. Um, we have the, um, the Heat and Peak, the Health Education Teacher Educators and the Physical Education Teacher Ed Educators Conference like that whole day on Tuesday. I'm really excited to, to be able to provide a day sort of dedicated to our higher ed uh, folks that are working with our future um, our future teachers. Yep. Uh, we have a ton of amazing, I think it was one of the highest uh, number of proposals that we've had. It was, wow. it was real, well, in the last several years, I mean, right, right, it right. was really, really, really good. And it was really tough, you know, um, having those selections from what, what we heard. Um, we have a lot of meetings that go on, our commercial presentations, the research stuff. Um, we have a lot of social events that I hope you pick up. And mm -hmm. we are going to have, you mentioned the leadership council, or I mean the leadership conversations. We're going to have a, a meeting of the, that group while we're here. So it's like yeah. when we get together, why not get together and continue those conversations and, and those conversations about what's going on in your state and how can people help each other? How do we help each other? Um, another big highlight, out of coffee talks. That yeah. was a big, big hit. So did you get to see any coffee talks yeah, or do some? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have three this year, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 930. Awesome. The yep. coffee talks are every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 930 to 1030. Um, yep. They'll be in the exhibit area. So do that. There's a, there's one about the standards. But if you're interested in the health education and physical education standards, there'll be something there. But there's also a couple of sessions on it. So somebody can speak to that a little bit later. Um, amazing vendors. Our vendor uh, expo is going to be pretty cool this year. It's going to be different. So that's going to be cool. You got to get in and see those and, and please get around and say thank you because without them, we wouldn't be able to be here. Absolutely. Um, uh -huh. Our keynotes though. Wow. Our keynotes. So our opening keynote is Tuesday at four o'clock. So don't miss it. Um, Sandy Zimmerman, the mm -hmm. Ninja Warrior, who was a PE teacher here in Seattle and um, started, you know, uh, doing the ninja uh, stuff. And now she was the first mom that got over um, the warped wall. And so she's actually on set right now, but she'll be here. Um, she's going to talk about, you know, her, her life and her journey and, and, um, and just, you know, dream the dream and, and go get it. Um, it's going to be very inspirational. She is an amazing person. I can't wait to meet her myself. That's going to be sponsored by the U S Marine Corps. Actually wow. I was excited by that. Yep. And we have um, a physical activity break by HealthSmart. We're going to have our um, then we'll, it'll be followed on Wednesday with our uh, opening um, celebration at Wednesday night from six to eight. That go for um, sponsoring. We'll have some light refreshments and some lawn games and um, things like that. So that'll be nice on Wednesday. We want everybody to come to the opening celebration. We have the all member delegate. A lot of people don't know about this one guy, the, the um, all member business meeting is where we do business, you know, yep. and everybody's invited. And it's where, you know, we have our delegates come. Uh, the delegate assemblies are those that are, are supposed to be there with, from our districts. But it's also where we pass the gavel and we, we, you know, you meet the new board. And I think those are all really important things that, you know, our members need to know that at least goes on, you know, while we're there. Um, Thursday, 1045, our majors of the year. Yes. Uh, gotta love them, man. Those, those students are amazing. And that's hard, hard, hard to think about one, you know, <laughs> so they're amazing. And we have so many great future professionals uh, coming through. That's so inspirational as well. Um, and then following that uh, on Thursday afternoon, we have the professional excellence awards. People yep. say, when are, when are our award ceremonies? Well, that's when it is. So that's Thanks. on that's on Thursday at four thirty. Um, that's when we give out um, all, most of almost all all of the awards except for the teachers of the year, and that's given out on Friday, at the closing ceremony at yep. the closing general session at four o'clock. So that's when we announce all the teachers of the year. Um, but we'll have an amazing speaker there too. Justin Forte is a um, health educator, but is incredibly amazing and knowledgeable, um, and she's going to be brought to us by our. Um, Chuck and Catherine Corbin, who have given us a foundation for equity, diversity, and inclusion endowment. So we'll have that every year now. Um, wow. we'll have somebody speaking to that right. topic. So, yeah, that's just a few of the highlights. I mean, there's so much more to go, but I mean, we got so many people to hear to talk about some of those things. So I hope everybody will come, have an amazing time. Come up and see me, introduce yourself. Let's, let's chat. 
Absolutely. So, Kim, we want to thank you so much for being here tonight, certainly providing this amazing overview. Uh, also, you know, one last thing, speak to uh, this. This is actually one of the very first times this convention hall in Seattle is ever being used. It so is. Talk a little bit about that, because uh, I'm really excited. I've seen some of the architecture of it. I know tom uh, on yeah tomorrow, <laughs> it's Sunday right now. Tomorrow, I'll actually be going live from there and doing a few features uh, on on just the layout, uh, so people can you know see some of the yeah. features and where some things are located. So, is one of maybe you can speak to that really quick? Well, yeah, I haven't been in there yet, so it is brand new. We've we've heard about that from the board. Um, I mean, from our staff at the board meetings, um, that it's brand new. We have seen some pictures, um, and it looks amazing. And I know that one thing is really cool is that. Um, they have these little halfway floors, like it, like it's floor seven to eight, but there's a seven and a half or something oh, wow. where you can have little meetings and gatherings and stuff and, or charge your phones. And, um, so there's going to be a lot of different things. It's a, it's, it's supposedly really unique in the design of it. Um, but yeah, it's brand new, uh, yeah. it a, a teacher's conference that just left actually any age just left. So, oh, wow. um, that was good to see another teacher group here, but yeah, it's going to be, I'm, I can't wait to get over there and see it myself. It's just right there across the street from the head hotel. All right. And Kim, <laughs> Hey, Abby Lingo, uh, Mo shapes future professional president says this is a great outlook for the future of the health and physical education due to all of the majors of the year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Kim, I know that, uh, you know, that's a big part of my heart as yeah. well as yeah. obviously our future professionals. So we're going to be doing a lot of media coverage from that area. I know Abby will actually be helping us and she'll be on in just a few minutes to talk about that. Yeah. So Kim. Well, any... don't forget the college bowl then go by and see the uh, student majors in the college bowl. That's really, that's a lot of fun. A lot of times. So. All right. Maybe she'll say something. So Kim, we'll bring it back at the very end. How does that sound? Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you, Kim. You know, guy, I think it's important to note that Kim can only touch on so many things. There's so much more that happens during Shape America. So if you're watching, I am going to invite you to introduce yourself in the comments and let us know what are you looking forward yeah. to at Shape Seattle? Let us know. Yeah, you can do that right now. The comments are live if you're certainly on YouTube. It doesn't do it if you're on Twitter watching this, but if you are on YouTube, you can certainly type in some live comments and uh, Jessica and I will be certainly to uh, post those up on the screen and give you a big shout out. And with that, let's move to our next guest. And uh, he comes all the way from, I know, the show me state of Missouri. I know I sound <laughs> a little biased, but we're bringing in one of our board of directors, Brad Brummel. Hey, Brad. Hello. And Brad, why don't you let everyone know in your official capacity what you do as the chair for Shape America of the National Standards? Yeah, so I co-chair I co the uh, National Physical Education um, Standards Revision Task Force. Um, Kim uh, did a great job talking about servant leadership. And uh, when she was describing uh, her view of servant leadership, I couldn't help but to think of the uh, task force members that are serving on both the PE and the health task force um, because they're just week in and week out donating their time um, really just to benefit our profession. Um, yeah for the work that goes towards our standards. And so uh, thank you for talking about servant leadership, Kim. Yeah, she does a great, she, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Brad, it, it's such a great topic mm -hmm. and it's going to be shown in so many different ways throughout the convention. So talk to us about where we're at with the standards. I know that's a big question. And also <laughs> why, like if you're involved in physical education, teaching, even with the health standards, why do we need to be going to these sessions? Because, um, we're getting near the end. Does that sound about right? We're getting there. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I think, I think the, um, the first instinct for a lot of people is like, man, I feel like we heard this last year and you did. Um, this work <laughs> is slow work. If you've ever been a part of just curriculum work in general, it's just, it takes time. Um, and so I guess I'll start by saying the standards are the backbone of our profession. Mm -hmm. um, they guide our instruction, they guide our curriculum planning, they guide our assessments, they guide the learning, they are the backbone. And so you want to stay involved, um, not only so that you stay informed, but your feedback um, guides the work of these two task force. Again, these are volunteers serving in these task force. We need your feedback. Right. Um, your voice needs to be heard. And so I'll just jump right into it, guy. We've got um, two update sessions that are geared towards 
informing our membership of the work that has been done um, for the PE specific task force, um, the work that's been done between receiving feedback in New Orleans and um, revising, um, taking that feedback and digging in. Um, so recently, the second draft of the standards has been released and, and okay. feedback is open again. Um, but we're also excited to give a little bit of a sneak peek into what we're working on now, which is that next layer, right? It's that next, uh, it's those outcomes. Yep. And so we're excited to give everyone a sneak peek into that. And I think that will help people start to see um, what they will start to look like um, with the goal of um, having, having the final draft released for Cleveland. So, wow. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're super excited. Um, the coffee talks that we've met, already mentioned on the call, those yeah. are Thursday and Friday morning. Um, just a little like sneak peek into those and why you should come to those. We know that there it's one thing to release new standards, right? It's another to, to, for states and for teachers to know what to do once they're released. And so we want to talk to teachers. We want to talk to membership about what is it that you need once new standards are released to help you be set up for success. And we know we can't wait until the release to start working on those supplemental resources. We need to start working on those now. Right. So come talk to us. Um, if you have questions about the standards, standard one, why did you do this? Standard two, we're, we're happy to, to have some dialogue around that. But we have some guided questions that we would love to pick your brain about. What, what are those supplemental resources you need as a teacher or as a leader to be successful with new standards? And so we're, we're excited for those opportunities, Guy. Well, that sounds great. So, uh, Brad, we look forward to seeing you and certainly the uh, the the big committee that because uh, I know it's a, a, a just so amazing all the work that's been put into this. I had a chance to be, attend those sessions last year uh, as I was filming some of it, but it was just so amazing the work that you're all doing. And I know that uh, we'll be coming out for that. And uh, Brad, Brad, I just want I, I have a quick question yeah, go ahead. for you. So if yes, someone yes. is not attending Shape Seattle oh, or is question. not able to attend a coffee talk, how can their voice be heard? Yeah, great question, Jessica. So um, the Shape America website has a ongoing live um, page for each standards task force. Um, you can stay connected with updates through that. And then right now, I believe both task force are open for feedback. So there's easy links there on the websites. Um, the feedback right now, I can speak specifically to the PE. There is a opportunity for you to give feedback on each specific of the four standards that are currently, and then also related to the, the implementation. Um, and so I would highly encourage anyone watching or listening to uh, take advantage of that, even if you're not attending. Yep. PE closes April 3rd, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and health is about the 22nd, I think, as well, April 22nd, I believe. Yeah, take advantage of those opportunities because um, we've already done it once. And I can tell you that feedback, I hope that if you've if you looked at the first draft of standards and now you've seen the second, they've changed quite a bit. And that was due to yeah. due in large to the feedback we received. So we're looking forward to diving into that second round. Absolutely. So, Brad, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you in just a few days out in Shape Seattle. Let's do it. Thanks, Brad. All right, Jessica, guess what? You asked and you shall receive. So why don't you go ahead and read these? We got some nice love. We got some good love coming in. So Jess, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a first year teacher. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know your first name with uh, with this here, but oh my gosh, a first year teacher. So good for you to take this jump and to come um, embrace it all, connect, learn from other educators. Let me tell you, you are in the right place. You all right. We got another one. All right, my birthday girl. Okay, Auburn's birthday is uh, coming up. We're going to do a little dual birthday celebration together. She's coming from Louisiana. Um, she's presenting, and and she's she's going to have a blast. So good to have you here, Auburn. All right, and we all know who this is. Yeah, excited to see everyone. Get the learning <laughs> on. All right, we got more. Okay. Minnesota is here. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the awesome thing. I know this only because of the Minnesota connection. So Steve is bringing students from his high school nice. with to oh present on a skills based nutrition education program. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing his presentation. We've had many chats about it, but um, it's fantastic. His partnership with their food service at their school. 
um, it's I'm I'm excited for this one. All right, we got one last one. Here we go. Oh, Judy! <laughs> I think we're gonna see from or hear from Judy a little later. Um, she's got the major of the year ceremony. So future professionals here, um, earning much deserved awards. Yeah. Um, super exciting for all of those future professionals who are able to come as well. What a great opportunity. All right. So Jessica, why don't you introduce our next guest? All right. We've got Dr. Kara Grant. She's a pre-K through grade 12 supervisor coming out of Maryland. She's on the Shape Maryland and Shape America Board of Directors. And she's also served on the EDI podcast. Hi, Kara. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good. Okay. I got to start this out. You're a coffee drinker. We all know Seattle is the home of Starbucks. How many times are you going to go to Starbucks while you're in Seattle? How many days am I going to be there, Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm a more I'm a morning coffee drinker, so I'm not gonna keep like going back, back, back. But I definitely start my day with uh, a little caffeine, a happiness in a cup. Mm -hmm. There For we sure. go. Yeah. Can you tell us about uh, your work with EDI, your work with Higher Ed, and what you're looking forward to in Seattle? Absolutely. Uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion is really personal to me, uh, you know, growing up from a multicultural background, being black and white. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, to get pulled in by Kenedra Tucker to the EDI podcast team. Um, and it, it was just the right place, the right time. Sean Nevels, we got Mara on there. We got so many good people from across the country serving on that. John Strong, Sue Sheppel. And uh, as a result of that think tank, that brain trust, we've been able to come up with a podcast and check it out. The latest one just dropped with Dr. Corey Boyd, but wait, he's also presenting at the conference. So all you have to do is search by his name and you could watch that podcast on your plane trip over while you're waiting to get here. And then you can go talk to the actual presenter as well as Sean Nevels, who's going to be coming on after me for <laughs> this. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. So what, what is it that you're most looking forward to in Seattle? So I love a good task list. I, I went in and I just typed equity and I was like, what am I going to get to first? And I, to fill my intellectual wellness and well-being, I saw those uh, higher ed research poster presentations. Yep. Cause that that's what grounds us. You know, when principals or district administrators are trying to cut programs and funding, you throw research at them and they can't talk you down. So higher ed really comes through for that in this program uh, from the presentations they're doing on equity and health PE, adaptive PE to just higher ed coming through with the good research based data points for us to advocate for our program and our profession. So all you have to do is search that word equity um, on the, the app or the website for the conference. And you're going to get a ton of great choices, whether you're elementary, middle school, high school teacher, or you're a fellow higher ed person. Cara, that's pretty exciting. And, uh, talk to us on the leadership front, because I know that you do a lot of work with shape America in that area. What are, what is, give us like a little sneak peek, if you would, of what are a few things that are going to happen in regards to leadership development and training? All right. I, I don't want to overstep or overspeak. So I'm going to try to do my best. Just give you a little glimpse, <laughs> give you a little glimpse, a little taste. All right. But if you go to that opening and closing session, you're going to hear and see great things about how EDI okay. continues to be infused in the strategic plan for the organization so that it's not performative, but you'll see it as big picture. And then you can see in the presentation and the leadership work and the training that we've done as a leadership team by having some come in and give us that as well as just seeing how EDI is infused in the standards work that we're doing. I mean, Brad was just talking about it. You have an opportunity to see it, to get feedback on it, to you know say what you don't like about it. You have a voice and it's not just anybody telling us what to do. And that's also why I came into being in the Shape America Board of Directors. I wanted to seat at the table. So shameless plug, if you ever want a seat at the table, Shape America Board of Directors, 
you can come in Eastern District, all the district work, your local state affiliate. This is a great time to network and find out about those leadership opportunities in the hallway. Uh, and reach out when you talk about equity, diversity, inclusion, find someone that doesn't look like you. Some areas are, are very, mo like there's only one narrative of people. It's a certain socioeconomic status that is her racial background. Try to find people from other parts of the country that are doing different things. Um, and that's what I usually try to do. Fun fact, la last yeah. year, my the highlight of my conference that I went to last year was running into my college professor, Dr. Ang <laughs> Chen, in the hallway. He's like, car. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I've ha I definitely passed the class, you know. <laughs> Um, and then later he emailed a picture from when I was student teaching. So that, that was to me, one of the highlights. It's just such great conferences are a great way to connect and reconnect. They are, you know what we want to do? We're going to change it up slightly. We're going to leave you on for our next guest and, uh, only because you guys work together. So we're going to bring on from again, the show me state of Missouri, Sean Nevels and, uh, Sean, <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Sean is the uh, serves on the Moshe Board of Directors mm -hmm. for the EDI. Yes, and Sean also is the host of the Shape America podcast. And Sean, why don't you uh, talk to us about this podcast that you do with Kara? Yo, man, I'm talking here. First off, we're talking about you know Starbucks coffee. I hope I mean your boy's gonna be oh, I already got energy, so I'm gonna be on 10 through this whole uh, this whole event. So y'all gotta watch out for me now. But no, man, the yeah, the Carlos point, the, the the EDI podcast has been absolutely amazing, you know, impactful conversations, reaching all audiences, you know, just having real conversations, right? And really trying to hit home on what we're trying to do and why it's important that we are inclusive um, with our practice. And two, you know, um, with the with the general session of Sandy Zimmerman on the Rick, the general uh, Shape America podcast, she was on that not too long ago. So if you need some content and a couple things to listen to on your way into Seattle, make sure you check out the EDI and the Shape America podcast. So, Sean, with that, talk to us about the podcast that you do with Kara. Yeah, yeah. So with Kara, yes, the EDI podcast, as we were saying, my bad. I think that I, that I catch that one. No, but. <laughs> Did, you, did I say it? Did I say it? Am hey, I, have I, some more coffee. Well, the, the next, the one that just <laughs> dropped. The one that just the dropped one. with Sean Neville's featuring the Corey Boyd. So, oh, my goodness. Sean, you talking about that one? Yeah. yeah. Listen, I talk. Drop I talk, that like it's the hottest guy, thing guy, out there. You know, you know what it is when you talk a lot. You know, you just forget what your conversations. Sometimes you may forget. But, yeah, Corey, Corey Dixon or, um, was just on. Yes, ah, ha, ha, Corey Dixon. Exactly. He is on the Shape America uh, PE Task Force as well. But we, you know, we just had that conversation. That one will not release in time, unfortunately, for, you know, for anybody that's traveling in. But when you get back and you're relaxed and settle back home in April, make sure you check out that that episode. And Sean, talk to us a little bit about some of the other things that you're involved in, certainly with your work with the Special Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Give, give, give us a little, you know, a little sneak peek on that. For sure. So last year, speaking of which, deja vu, man. This wasn't even a year ago. I feel like we were having this conversation, God. But last <laughs> year, you know, Special Olympics had a pretty big footing um, at the conference with Chris, mm -hmm. Chris Nickich, um, Special Olympics athlete and Ironman, yeah. who spoke at the general session and also our chief health officer. It's absolutely hard to top that. I can't lie, but there will there will be a performance uh, during the open general session oh, Tuesday wow. afternoon. So I won't tell. I won't say anything just make sure you tune in uh during that time also as always we have we'll have a booth um at the special at, at the shape america convention at the exhibit hall booth 502 make sure you check that out got some resources there for inclusive uh fitness and uh physical activity and nutrition um if you want one please come come see your boy also hey shout out to Lori from san diego she'll be doing a session on her unified champion program that's yeah. thursday at 10 45 and of course yours truly will have a session of my own friday at 12 o'clock hopefully you're still there i know i will be i have to be right coffee up and ready to go so make sure you're there <laughs> so sean uh i'm gonna steal Jeff jessica's excellent material um how many starbucks runs are you gonna make say that again 
How many? I'll let it, Jessica go ahead and ask the question. So, how many Starbucks <laughs> runs will you make? How many times will you go to Starbucks? <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Uh, how many? How many hours in five days? Man? That's about how many. I mean, just just out of fun to check it out. You know, I'll, I'll be there. You'll see me there. You might see me kind of double handed and having a good time. You know, <laughs> shaking hands and kissing babies, uh, all uh, caffeined up. So. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds awesome. So, Sean, thanks for being on. We look forward to seeing you again in just a few days. Uh, Cara, the same thing. Thank you so much for giving us the, the sneak peeks. And we'll see both of you in just a few days. Thank you both. Thank see you. Ya. You know, uh, and Guy, a great transition there. We were talking unified PE. I say let's go to our uh, 2022 Shape America National Adapted wow. of the Year from the great state of Minnesota. Oh. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Jen. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. yeah. So, Jen, um, I I gotta ask you. We gotta we gotta kind of just start this off right. So, New Orleans. Yeah. All about beignets. What Ooh. are you looking forward to eating in Seattle? Um, I, I don't know. Like, I know that they have that like farmer's market, a fish market. So I'm kind of excited to like go see like someone toss a fish. Yep. Like, that's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see someone toss a fish across the farmer's market. And not get like hit by the fish, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Like the food, like I don't, I don't know a lot about Seattle. So I'm really excited to just like get there. I have a friend um, who lives there. And so Saturday after the conference is over and we're all like, whoo, it's all done. Um, he's going to take me on a hike around the peninsula area. So I'm super stoked for that. I'm kind of, I'm just like more excited to see the city. Um, so yeah, it will be really interesting. I'm super excited. Awesome. Now, um, the school I'm working at right now is on spring break. Are you going to be on spring break? No. So I am going to Seattle and then I'm coming back and it's spring break. There you go. So you'll have to miss your students. You posted yeah. on Twitter. Do you do you have it available? You posted on Twitter yes. a fantastic letter from a student. Would you share it? Mm, yes, I can. So this actually comes from, let's see if I can get it. Um, every quarter I do a final for our partners who work with student with my my teammates, my students with disabilities. Um, and at the end, I always leave the last question open. So the last question I say, last question ungraded, what feedback do you have for Mrs. Hebink or literally anything else you want to share? So most, sometimes, not most of the time, but a lot of times it's like, I got nothing, but like the, this quarter specifically, like students just kept like leaving me feedback. Um, and so this student specifically, I've now had twice, um, in class and like, I like sat there and just kind of started to like tear up a little bit. Um, so here's what she says. So the feedback that she says, she says, there is no wonder why you won teacher of the year. You are doing such an amazing thing for so many students and your work ethic is so admirable. I am so lucky to have been able to take this class again and learn even more than the first time around. Thank you for being you. I appreciate you so much. Um, and what I love about that is that, like, I know this kid and how deep her heart goes for her friend. Like, she told me in an earlier question that she said, this class helped me find my calling. Um, and she's going to yeah. go, she's going to go into speech pathology. Yeah. So she, like, just took, took everything in. Um, and the one thing that I've seen consistently, like, even more like this last year is that that question is where kids will also say, I've struggled mentally so much the last year, and this class helped me end every day on a good note. I wanted to be at school. I've had kids say, you know, I will come every day and, and cry to my counselor, but I come to this class and I feel good about who I am. Um, and so I'll always tell kids, when you come to my class, you get to show up and be you. It's not a place where you need to perform. Um, like math, science, even other phi ed classes. And so that's really important to me that they walk into my class and they can just be themselves um, and they kind of find themselves. So I like, I read that and I was, yeah. oh, I love her yeah. and I love this and I love what I do. It's hard. Yeah, but that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. So Jen, obviously for the student you're talking about, your class is a memorable moment. Now, 
let's look back to, I mean, we don't even get a full year. We can't, you know, we only have 11 months as our year, <laughs> um, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but in the past year, what has been your most memorable moment as Shape America Adapted PE Teacher of the Year? So initially when we won, like that's obviously like that's going to be something that is so special that I hold on to like forever. But I would say this is really cool. So when we were at the Minday conference, Jess, do you remember taking my picture at camp? So every year for like the past six years, I, we've had the National Teacher of the Year come to camp for this conference, our home conference, the one that just means so much to me. Um, and so I would take a picture with the National Teachers of the Year every single year. And then this year I was like, wait, that's me. Like I am mm. it. And so it was just kind of like a full circle moment of like reminding myself, like when I, when I put people around me, when I hang out with the best, like I get to learn from the best. And then now I get to help other people. Like it just, it was a very surreal and exciting and awesome moment that I got to spend with Jess and with our other adaptive PE teachers of the year that are basically like my new sisters. Um, so it's been good. Yeah. So what Jen is referencing there is, is the district adapted PE teachers of the year. Yeah. So through the process, um, you know, we've got our 2023 district teachers of the year coming into Seattle. Um, you remember how we felt? Um, what advice do you have for them coming into Seattle? Um, I would say something that I tried to do was just like stay within myself say say what I've now learned is regulated self-regulated and like thinking <laughs> clearly and like um ground yourself um take breaks when you need to um and get to know those other people but even even whoever is national teacher of the year is national teacher of the year but the the district teachers of the year get to do just as much yeah. as Absolutely. the national teachers of the year like th this is a, a family and yep. um there have been times when like i can't make an event happen and so i'll say hey my my other teachers of the year cohort of adaptive pe are so amazing like i'd love to give yeah. it so like we all just um work together and so just taking it in um matthew bassett bassett i don't know if you know him um from california gave me the best advice ever he said take a minute when you're in all those special things for the teacher of the year, the toy dinner, the, the award ceremony, take a minute to just look around, soak it in, like smell the smells, see the people and like make that deep memory because that is special. Don't shove that down. Like this is for you. It's special. Um, Cause often as teachers of the year or when you get an award, you're like, Oh, I don't deserve it. And no, you deserve it. Like take that in. That's so special. Um, so just take a minute to look around and be like, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, Jen, let me let me just pop this on screen really quick. I just want to let you see the impact that you're having. And if you're watching this, feel free to type in the comments. We'll we'll air them. I want to show a few. You were talking. First of all, this is what uh, our president of Shape America thought. She absolutely, Jen, loves your story, especially the student. And that's just a great example of servant leadership. And then this comes from Abby Lingle, Mo Shape's future professional president. I know, right? That's what it's about. And Jen, I, I really have one question for you, though. You know, one thing that I've seen, because I had the privilege of doing a podcast with you, Jess, and three other National Teachers of the Year. But Jen, one of the things that I've seen you do is advocate so strongly through social media, even bringing the camera into your classroom uh, on a fairly regular basis and really just sharing your heart and the, the progress that you're making and uh, all the advocacy that you've been doing. I was wondering if maybe you could speak to that and why it's so important as teachers that that if we're able to, that we can do that and why we should do that. I just think social media is so powerful for connection. And um, I talk about this every once in a while, but when I ran into Randy Spring in 2018, I was in his session right after, he, and then he came to mind and we had this conversation right after he goes, Jen Heaping, you need to share what you're doing. You're doing good mm -hmm. things. And I'm like, really? Like, um, but he is just one example of how we've like picked up certain things and inserted into each other's teaching, like back and forth. Yeah. And our prog our programs are fantastic because of the things that we've just gleaned off of each other. Um, and so I just think there are teachers that 
need ideas, need help, need adaptations and modifications that just come natural to me or I've learned from other people. And so why not help other people um, by sharing on social media and like saying, hey, my students rock, like look at what they're doing yeah. and sh giving them the voice to like share what they're up to and like the inclusive culture of our school that's changed so much because they found their voice and I want to share that they have found their voice and it's not necessarily me advocating all the time. It's, it's them. Right. Like they're often pushing me more than, um, than I do myself. But I truly think that like the more we share with each other, the better we get together. I think it's an empowerment mm -hmm. for it other is. teachers to yeah. try new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's, I, I attended a MinShape session from Randy a couple of years ago at, at MinShape and I was just able to put his progression this year into my class and <laughs> wow, like I've never been able to do it before. And I finally was just brave enough to just try. Um, and that's what my platform is about, like just being brave um, <laughs> and, and being brave. And it's really blown my mind, honestly. So teachers help teachers. Absolutely. And Jen, uh, we got a little advice from you. This is coming straight from the comments. And uh, here you go. Don't forget to try eating the fish as well, Jen. <laughs> and Jen, I will share this with you. If you're an omelet person, what's great about oh. Seattle, because I've been there many she times. She doesn't like eggs, but you tell me. You uh, tell okay. Me. So Jessica, I'll tell you what is really great is you can have um, salmon um, in almost any dish you want. That <laughs> is both of Jen fresh and I. Salt. <laughs> hey we're from minnesota we just want a hot dish <laughs> exactly <laughs> and kim says exactly to what you said jen be brave i'm on board absolutely great message we cannot thank you enough jen uh for uh you know coming on tonight also uh i'll be working with again the 2022 class of the national teachers of the year as we want to put some featured uh content out on social media as we get ready for the big announcement on friday night for the 2023 Shape America National Teachers of the Year. Sounds good. I'm game. Hey, Guy, can you do me a favor? Can you yeah. ask Jen and I if we're excited for Oh, Shape boy. Seattle? Can you just ask? Just ask us. Oh, boy. I'm scared. All right. Hold on. I'm taking this out. <laughs> hey, Jessica and Jen, how yeah. excited are you for Shape Seattle? No, no, no. No, are we excited? Oh, sorry. Are you excited for Shape Seattle? You <laughs> Oh, you two. You are definitely one dynamic duo. Uh, as you guys were all over social media with You Betcha. And yes, there was a lot of actually fun things. And thank you so much again, Jen, for being on tonight. Thanks, yeah, Jen. absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Jessica, we're getting near the end. But I got to tell you, we're learning all kinds of really cool things. And now I think it's time to double down on one of my favorite areas, and that is with the future professionals. And uh, I couldn't think of anyone quite like this person is our next guest, as she is the Mo Shape, again from the Show Me State. We're with Abigail Lingo. She is the Mo Shape Future Professional President. And last year she attended Shape NOLA. And she helped us, actually. Not only was she one of the majors of the year, but she helped us in some of the media by actually doing some of the interviews with some of the uh, Shape uh, winners. So, Abby, how are you doing and what does this convention mean to you? Well, first off, hello, everyone. I am super excited <laughs> after hearing everyone else talk about their experience and what they're looking for. It just makes me extremely excited to get out to Seattle. I don't get there till Tuesday, so I'm like biting at the gun to just get on the plane and go. Um, but this convention, yeah, it's my second convention and now, since I know a little bit more about what national conventions all about, I like have people I'm already lining up of where to meet. We've been talking for weeks on end of where they're staying, when we're meeting up, what um, sessions we want to go to with each other and just like getting to see all those amazing presenters and talk to people. I am just so excited for this convention. So Abby, highlight a few things for us that's going to happen besides obviously the awards, the majors of the year, which is definitely one of the what I think one of the key mark you know marquee events of certainly the entire convention to see all our young professionals you know earning the majors of the year awards also some of the professors that are there and some of the people that are very proud 
of your accomplishments. So what are some other things that are going on for the future professionals? Yeah, so I feel like this year there's a very strong lineup of activities for future professionals to attend. Tuesday, starting the day off, we have the um, first attendee student orientation. That's where they kind of just educate you about what convention's all about. And then I agree with everyone else, attend opening general session. That is where the energy level gets set for the rest of the week. Like the energy there, you're just going to experience it every single moment for the rest of the week. And then starting Wednesday, we have a coffee talk that talks about making the most out of convention and how to get involved with Shape America. I feel like that's a coffee talk that future professionals can attend just to get involved a little bit more. And then for grad students, there's a session for you guys. And then the college bowl. I am excited for that. <laughs> I am not participating this year because I didn't get a team together, but I have a couple friends who are, and I'm super excited to go and cheer them on and maybe see if I can answer the own, my own questions um, silent, silently. So maybe next year I maybe can join. Um, and then opening celebration. I suggest to be there. Um, for any future professionals, last year when I went, that is where I got to meet people from all over and really got to network with them. I was talking to teachers from Florida and Hawaii who were telling me to come and teach there. And, you know, it's kind of on my mind, but we'll see if I want to go all the way that far. And then Thursday, there's another amazing coffee talk. And then the major of the year ceremony, which if Judy is hosting it, everyone needs to be there. That is going to be the hype of this um, convention <laughs> with Judy hosting that. And then Friday, another great coffee talk about jobs, um, how to land them, key tips and tricks. There's also an interview session that day. But then my favorite one that I am looking forward to personally is the undergraduate student yeah. leadership one at 1045 on Friday. Be there. I'll be there. I'll be probably throwing a little party there. Bob's hosting it, as he mentioned. Yep. And yes, I will be a little interviewed as speak out day. But those are just some amazing sessions that I think future professionals should write down on their schedule. And Abby, you know what, we're, we're going to just do a, a quick little shout on this because Missouri, it was the first time in our history just two months ago, that we sent a future professional to speak out day. And if you could just briefly from your perspective, and again, remember who our audience is, you're talking to your peers here, you know, why do you think, you know, future professionals should be involved in Speak Out Day, especially now that you get a chance, you were there on the front lines, as we were meeting with all these different folks from Missouri, all our, um, you know, people from Congress, tell us a brief snapshot of that experience. Oh my goodness, that experience is a memory that will be engraved in my mind because <laughs> I'll be, I will be so transparent with all my other future professionals. I was scared to go. I was I'm scared like, to go. Yeah, I'm like, as a college student, I'm like, I'm gonna go talk to my like legislators about issues. I'm like, what? But no, it was such a big educational moment for me. Yeah. It was such a moment that I'm very passionate about physical education and health that I got to advocate for it and. Yeah. When I was talking to some of those um, legislators and everything, like they truly cared yeah. and wanted to listen. Like as a college student, mm -hmm. they know I'm headed out there in the real world. I'm excited to go. Like there's a reason I went to college for this. And like they're wanting to know how can they help better our profession and make us want to still be teachers because we know there's a teacher shortage out there right now. Right. But if we're all passionate, they want to help us get there because educating the young students is so amazing and it's needed in the world. Abby, what was so great, too, because I was there with you, just seeing how they responded to you being mm -hmm. a student and you're going through it as they're asking you questions, they're valuing what you're saying. And how did it feel to advocate for more Title II Part A and more Title IV Part A? It felt extremely amazing because yeah. um, going into it, I first off got to learn a lot more of what Title II Part A is and what Title IV Part A is and right. how that truly is going to impact me as a teacher one day and also impact my students. Like right. we were advocating for it to make the classroom a better place for our students to learn and everything. So it is just an absolutely amazing experience that I would want every single future professional to go to. And yeah. there's honestly a lot of future professionals from other states who attend. Like right. New York had maybe 10, 15 future professionals. Yep. Iowa brought four. 
I think Colorado had some out there. Like there's a lot of future yeah. professionals out there. So you're like, I wasn't alone. We were all going through it together and it was absolutely amazing. So Abby, my final question is why don't we respond to uh, Bob's comment? Um, yeah, the training, absolutely yeah. perfect. Um, like I said, going into, I didn't know much, but when we sat there and had the training for yeah. on the Hill, it was eye opening. Like I really got to ask questions and I got to see how it happened kind of in some other States and their experience or even just past experience. Um, people have been advocating on the Hill about maybe some of these topics for a while that they've seen progression and it's only getting better and it's only getting better because our voices are out there pushing it, letting it be known that we need the the funding and we need that title part two a and four part a, like we need that to make our classroom right. successful. So it's absolutely amazing to see the progression that we have. Well, Abby, thank you for coming on. I'm going to put you on the spot because I know you're going to be doing some posting on social media. Future professionals, if you want to stay up to date on everything, just go follow Abby on Twitter <laughs> yep. and, and Instagram, and she'll keep you updated on all the really cool events that are going on, as well as the College Bowl, the majors of the year, and, of course, that really cool session that you'll be part of to talk about your experiences from when you were on Capitol Hill. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. All right, Jessica, we're we're coming near the end. We got two more guests left. We Who's our do. Next guest? Yeah, our next is soon to be Dr. Lisa Paulson, a PhD candidate at the University of Northern Colorado. But don't let me fool you. She is from Minnesota. She's the chair of the Shape America Physical Activity Council. Tell us about that. What is the Physical Activity Council? Well, I'm um, I'm ready for the game. When does the game start, Jesse guy? <laughs> is it time yet? Well, the, the Hawkeyes are in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the Physical Activity Council. So, for those watching, the um, Physical Activity Council and other councils, Shape America has five councils: physical education, health education, research, professional prep, and physical activity. So the councils work on several different tasks um, as part of the work that Shape America wants to push forward, like revising position statements, guidance documents. Uh, we also help develop the mind and body calendars and several presentations and papers and different things too. Awesome. And then what about, what about the special interest groups and corporate wellness? Tell us about those. Sure. So new, uh, the special interest groups or the SIGs have now been put sort of underneath the councils and in connection with where it makes sense. So, for example, the employee wellness SIG has sort of been starting from scratch. And Guy and I did a did a Zeg talk on this a few weeks back. So feel free to go watch that if you're into employee wellness and have a passion for um, educator self-care and those things. But the Employee Wellness SIG is overseen now by the Physical Activity Council. So we are very excited. We've got a few coffee talks, a few sessions, and a lot to look forward to and ways to get involved. And Lisa, w with that, and there's also going to be opportunity for people to participate even, right, and get on some of these special interest groups, right? So it's also a chance for people, if they really are interested, that there's a place to plug in, correct? There is a place to plug in. So speaking of coffee talks, and I feel like, you know, so many of us have coffee talks and there's so many good ones. So I feel kind of bad. I don't want to plug it too much because it's like, oh, but stop by that one too, you know, <laughs> so Minnesota nice in me. But but we've got two coffee talks for, for the Physical Activity Council and we've got two for the Employee Wellness SIG. So the Physical Activity Council, we hope you stop by. We've got them, uh, well, they're every day. They're Tuesday, Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we've got about the calendars, some of your feed calendars. How are you using these mind and body calendars that are being created? Do you want to help? Um, what are some ways that we can boost physical activity for your students inside and outside of the phys ed classroom? So a coffee talk about that. We'd love to hear your feedback um, and just gain some more energy for that resource. I know that's a highly clicked on resource on the Shape America website. So Check that one out. And then we also have another coffee talk pertaining to a session. So the Physical Activity Council released the revised version of physical activity used as punishment and or behavior management position statement in December of 21, which seems like a long time ago now. But believe it or not, 
physical activity as punishment is still happening, both withholding and administering. And so this is a hot topic where we've got a session as well on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, framed around advocacy. How can we share this position statement and do the good work to acknowledge the inappropriate practices while acknowledging grace, right? We all are doing our best and educate, right? People don't know what they don't know. So how can we take this position statement and other living position statements to advocate to do better? Right. Um, and as well as a coffee talk about that and hopefully not leaving those conversations in Seattle at that table, but taking them with us into our schools and into our districts to be, uh, to be advocates. Lastly, employee wellness SIG. Uh, we've got a coffee talk about uh, educator self-care. And then we've got a coffee talk about just a meet and greet and what's going on in your school. Do you have policies and practices in place related to staff wellness? Do you want to be on the SIG? Do you have an interest in, in serving in, in that capacity and volunteering to be part of some of this work or maybe a potential task force involved in, you know, maybe there's a revision happening that the PA council can oversee and you're interested in doing some of that work. Um, we'd love to see you there as well as a related session on uh, teacher burnout. That's a, another hot topic, right? Mm -hmm. Educators are are burnt out. And so what can we do? Not a complaining session, but a solution oriented session to talk right. about tangible strategies to take with you back to your school and hopefully keep the fire going and, and talk about sustainability and, and teacher retention. Yeah, a absolutely. Lisa, we just want to thank you so much for the work that you're doing as one of the chairs for the physical activity council and certainly yeah. work with the special interest groups. I know this is a great extension from what we did a few weeks ago, just trying to raise more awareness for it. And I know you're going to be one very busy person uh, with so many great sessions coming up. So Lisa, soon to be Dr. Polson. Thank well, you. We're going so to also ask, she's going to be Bob's voice right now. So Lisa, can you, we're going to stoke the fire here. Yep. Um, can you explain if people aren't following on, on Twitter, right now, they should be following the shape countdown, hashtag shape countdown. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so it's not too late. I know we've done a couple of them already or, or the PE pep talk, you should look for that. And the hashtag shape countdown has put them out on Facebook, on social media. So I think you can go back, you know, and just start answering the questions or start, start today and amp up the excitement. So I think, you know, the intention behind that is really just to bring people together and boost the excitement for the convention, but also especially for some of our first time attendees or people who yeah. maybe aren't quite in yet. They don't have the the established network of a phys ed family quite yet. So they're thinking about what their intentions are for the conference. They're getting to know other people. They're, they're building their network beforehand to boost the excitement and build community so that when it comes time, uh, we can we can amplify their experiences. Absolutely. And Lisa, really quick, you know, I was talking to Bob earlier today and just talk about how that networking is so important, especially when this is maybe your first or second convention. It's so important. And, you know, hearing from Abigail and it just it rejuvenates me and it gets me so energized hearing from a future professional and oh, talking about advocacy and speak out day and national convention. There's nothing better than knowing. Yeah that our future is in good hands, you know, and so be it a future professional or just a teacher who maybe hasn't been able to make it to this is their, you know, perhaps their first convention. Building the network is so, so important. We can yeah. do that on social media. Thank goodness. That's an amazing start. But there's nothing like the energy when you get especially that opening session and, and all of the passion that you're surrounded by. There's nothing like building your phys ed family. Absolutely. Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time. Love the headband. And uh, we'll see you in a few days. All right. Thanks, Lisa. So excited. All right, Jessica. This is it. I think we need to end on a good note here. A we've good note? We've got to hold on. No, we, they, well, this, uh, uh, everyone's been good. I mean, uh, <laughs> how do you even – energy – I mean, well, I bring it too, but put the two of us in the room together. Oh, my Who gosh. do we got next, guy? Well, I'm just going to give you a little preview. Let's just say she has the nickname, The Boss. Or if she was out of Chicago, we'd say The Boss. But, you know, she's known as The Boss. Um, and I have the privilege of when I first got started getting involved in social media, 
for Shape America. It was actually at her convention and meet former Shape America past president, Judy Lobianco. Oh my goodness. Hello, Jessica and Guy. I know we're running over, but I don't care because I'm from New Jersey, right? Oh my God. Oh my goodness. I'm so thrilled to be here. I am inspired. <laughs> by everything I have heard, the next generation of this profession is just a very exciting thing to watch. I, I don't know if you have questions for me, Guy, but I'm ready to ramble on for about two minutes. Go! Go! All right. So, Judy, actually, the first one, talk oh. to us about, talk to, yeah, talk to us about uh, something that's been near and dear um, to everyone. I know that you continue to advocate at the highest level for this, but, you know, we could not do a show like this unless we talked about the latest developments with Health Moves Minds. Right. So kind of give us a preview of what's going to happen at this year's convention. Yeah, so so four years ago when I was the president of Shape America, we were just talking about the inception of a program that would be a matter of life and death, a program that would get ahead of what we knew was going to be a theme that was going to be extremely important in schools that was social, emotional learning and equity, diversity and inclusion. And then a pandemic proved our point, right? So we were way ahead of this curve and I'm excited to know that our lessons and our um, our fundraiser have been so in the forefront around helping communities and helping children leave their best lives around their mental health. So, and in New Jersey, a, a personal piece of this is that, you know, we've got kids here in New Jersey that are, are thinking about suicidal ideation. And right. I know that's happening around the country. It's something that's on the forefront of our minds, mental health, is equal to physical health. And Health Moves Minds is all about making sure we get ahead of that and making sure the health and PE teacher are the professionally certified content experts in this field. And we are, right? So at this convention, I urge you to please find out more about what we're doing around these lessons, to talk about the fundraiser that is not only helping your school with so much money that comes back to the school in the form of a go for gift card, Gopher is our sponsor. We love you. Uh, but also about how the lessons are changing lives and how social emotional learning was literally invented by health and physical educators, right? So please join us at the convention for these sessions and join us, those team champions that have been raising money Thursday night at our 7 p.m. team champion social. I'll be there along with Stephanie Morris and uh, Stephanie Jumps to thank you personally for all of the work you've done around fundraising for this year. I, I can't thank you enough for considering coming to Seattle. I can't thank D Guy and Jessica enough for hosting this incredible evening. And I'm just inspired by the future and looking forward to all of the hugs I'm going to get out in Seattle. I'll see you all this <laughs> week. Thank you all so much for your support. Hey, Judy, we got a comment you have to respond to, and this is really cool. Obviously, <laughs> there's Kim's, obviously, with servant leadership, of course. But here's one from Bob Knight. I was wondering if maybe you could uh, read this to us. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Yes, yes. I, I tell you what, here in New Jersey, we've got a long tradition at Montclair State University. And the Panzer School was one of the first schools to introduce health and physical education as a major. And there are decades of professionals here in the state of New Jersey who, who consider themselves part of Panzer Pride. And, and when we're at convention here at Shape NJ, we gather, we talk, we reminisce about the past and the future. And it's a long, it's a long tradition of pride around what we do at Montclair State and around the other colleges here in New Jersey, yeah. but particularly for me and Bob, uh, we lost a professor this year who was a pivotal mentor in our ability to understand. And this is for all the future professionals out there that when you go in health to, and when you go into health and physical education, it's not about just you being a teacher, but you right. taking on the leadership as an advocate yeah. for this profession. It's just the way it is, and it's something that you should embrace. And that's what we learned at the Panzer School, Bob. And I uh, through our great professors at Montclair State. So embrace that part of you that's a leader and an advocate always. And Judy, last question for you yeah. is what are you looking most forward to for Shape Seattle? Oh my goodness. Thank you for the question. I Connection and networking and uh, uh, reunions and learning. Even at 53 years old, after uh, a career in physical education of 32 years, I'm now a consultant and looking to be able to impart among teachers the very best and cutting edge research in our field. I'm looking forward to learning about and promoting and advocating for the new national health and PE standards yeah. in my state. 
and uh, being being part of it, right? I may be at the end of my career, excited about those coming behind me, excited about passing the torch, but as long as I still feel I need something to contribute, that's gonna happen. So the SHAPE convention is something that really connects me uh, to the cutting edge of the future for this profession. It is the go-to resource. Shape America is the go-to resource and the go-to convention for making sure that we can bring kids the very best we can in this profession. So I'm looking forward to having lots of conversations and seeing all of you there in Seattle. Absolutely. Thank you, Judy. Just stay Thank on because we're going to bring everyone back. What I'd like to do is I'm bringing people back. Jessica, why don't you talk to us about maybe your final word as I bring everyone back? Yeah, you know, so if this is your first time coming or if it's your how many time coming, um, make the most of it. You know, like I was saying earlier, say yes, make those connections. Um, gents, be brave, you know, maybe try something different. Um, and if you're watching and you're not attending Shape Seattle, really start to advocate um, with your school on trying to get you to be able to go to Cleveland next yeah. year as well. Um, I think you can just tell from everyone here, we are all so excited. Mm -hmm. It is such a fantastic opportunity to attend. Um, so I think speaking for all of us, we are looking forward to it. Absolutely. And Kim, we would not be fitting to close out this live stream without you having literally the final word it is servant leadership. This is your convention. You and the team have been planning literally for a very long time on this. And, you know, now that you've had a chance to take in everyone talking about what's about to happen, how are you feeling right now? And what's your final word? Oh, so emotional. Um, I would just say the three words that we live by is, you know, love, loyalty, and leadership. And uh, have fun, connect. <sighs> it's life changing if you let it. Absolutely. Uh, Abby, could I ask you to take a picture? Is that all right? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. All right, everyone smile. <clears throat> awesome. All right, we'll get that out. I want to thank each and every one of you so much for your contributions, insights, uh, and even some of your funny stories. And uh, certainly, I just want to say thank you to everyone being a part of tonight. And I know that, Kim, we are so looking forward to the most amazing uh, Shape America, you know, convention and expo and in, in, in certainly in their history, especially at this brand new, beautiful venue in Seattle. Uh, I want to say thank you again. I want to say thank you for all the comments that uh, that you provided tonight. And certainly for those of you who might be watching the replay, we certainly look forward to seeing all of you at Shape Seattle. And if you're not, just keep stay tuned to the social media channels by Shape Americas because we're going to be putting out more content than we ever had in our history. I can tell you that for sure. And we're so excited. And Kim, thank you so much. And to everyone for our amazing guests. Also to my co-host, Jessica Matheson. Let's give her a big round of pinch hitting for Michelle Huff. I know. Great job. <laughs> and and guy, a big shout out for Shape and Shape staff for putting this amazing yeah. on. They have worked so hard so yeah. long. So thank you. Yeah. Well, we'll see you all in a few days for uh, Guy Dan Huff. Yay! Thank you so much for watching this broadcast of our pregame Shape Seattle Convention Preview Show. Thank you, and have a great night. See you in Seattle. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Take care, everybody.